In this lesson, we are going to learn how to conversion factors and unit measurement that relate to chemistry and how the measurement in chemistry is a lot different than other measurement. For instance, if we're talking about currency, we only talk about a values that are defined by a number and a unit. And therefore, a conversion factor has two unit and two number. The same thing with unit measurement for volume in this case we have liters one liters which is a number and a unit equal to a number and milliliter so it's defined by a number and a unit but in chemistry it is more complicated than that in chemistry we have different substance because we deal with different chemical so therefore the identity of a substance is now being important for instance we have a conversion factor that is defined by one mole of carbon. Now, what is one mole of carbon? One is the number. Of course, follow number must be a unit. But then, what is carbon? We know that carbon is the element carbon, so it is the identity of a substance. And all chemistry measurement has this three part, a number, a unit and the identity of a substance. So we look at this conversion factor, we have one mole of carbon is equal to 12 grams of carbon. Notice how 12 is a number, the unit is gram and the identity of a substance is carbon. And then here we have one mole of carbon is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Like wait a minute, we have a very large number and then we have another unit called atom. Wait, isn't atom is the simplest form of matter? But why is it function as a unit? And that's what makes chemistry complicated. Because now we have word, a term that defines a substance, now function as a unit. So therefore, that's what makes chemistry such a difficult topic to study. We have a very large values, and we have a unit that is defined by a word that describes something else, and then we have the identity. It doesn't really matter what is the unit is, as long as you know the unit function as a unit, and it has the identity. And a number, it doesn't matter if a number is large or the number is small. It is still just a number that we can just plug in the calculator directly. So don't get troubled by the number as well as the fancy unit in chemistry. As long as you follow the format, number, unit, and identity of a substance you can apply to any chemistry problem that you can convert from any unit measurement in chemistry to another unit measurement in chemistry. So let's try one problem together. We have how many mole of carbon are there in 36 grams of carbon? So what is our given? Of course our given is we are given how much that we have so that's what the, the word given means. You give exactly how much you have. Notice how I underlined the number, the unit, as well as the identity of the substance. And our given is 36 grams of carbon. What about our unknown? What are we trying to look for? We are trying to look for, of course the question asks, how many moles of carbon? So do we know the number? No, we don't. That's why we could label as unknown with the letter u and what is the unit the unit is mole and what is the identity of the substance it is carbon okay so let's go back to look at our conversion factor do we have something grams of carbon to moles of carbon notice how i don't care about the number or the unknown number i only care about the unit and the identity okay the number 36 tells us that's how much we have as our given. That's what we start a problem with. But the most important is the unit and the identity of a substance. So let's look at our conversion factor. So what conversion factor that has moles of carbon and grams of carbon? Oh, look at right there. We have moles of carbon and grams of carbon. Look at that. And the beauty behind this is all the conversion factor will be given to you. So let's take our given and time the conversion factor. In this case, since we have one conversion factor that has a relationship between moles of carbon and grams of carbon, we don't have to multiply by any other conversion factor except for this one. So we take our given 36 
grams of carbon, which is represented by the letter C, and I'm going to abbreviate that, okay? And then multiply by our conversion factor, in this case, which is 1 moles of carbon, I'll just copy it exactly, 1 moles of carbon, equal to 12 grams of carbon. And that is the conversion factor that we have to multiply to get our moles of carbon. Do we have to multiply by any other conversion factor? The answer is no, because we have a conversion factor that has the given unit as well as our unknown unit. So let's multiply as a fraction now. So we have 36 grams of carbon time. Because this is grams of carbon, the bottom unit must also be grams of carbon. Remember, they have to be the same. This is the same as the previous unit. In this case, this part is on the bottom of the fraction. So we have 12 grams of carbon. And if this part is on the bottom of the fraction, the top part must be 1 mole of carbon. And guess what happened? The grams of carbon cancel out. Give us the moles of carbon, which is what we're looking for. So let's simplify this. Of course, we're going to have this equal to take all the number on top, multiply them, which is 36 times 1 mole of carbon. Notice how I write down the unit as well. Why don't I write down grams of carbon? Because it's being canceled out. We multiply everything on top, now we divide everything on the bottom, which is just one number by 12 grams. And then we take the calculator and we plug in 36 times 1 divided by 12 and give us 3 moles of carbon. So the values of 3 moles of carbon has the same values as 36 grams of... Now are you ready to multiply by a series of a conversion factor? which means we had to multiply by more than one conversion factor to get our unknown. Ready? Let's look at this problem together. How many atoms of carbon are there in 36 gram of carbon? So I underline my number and unit and the identity of the given. But what is our unknown? I'm looking for a number of atoms of carbon. Atoms is a unit, carbon is the identity. So this is our U right there. Or unknown. Let's go back to our table of conversion factor to see if we have one conversion factor that can relate atoms of carbon and grams of carbon. And it turned out we don't have any, but we have moles of carbon equal to grams of carbon. And then we have moles of carbon equal to atoms of carbon. And notice, right? Atom is now related to mole, and mole is related to gram. So now we have some kind of relationship. That is, we can say, hey, gram is, gram of carbon is related to what? Moles of carbon. And moles of carbon is related to atoms of carbon. But the tricky part is what is the conversion factor that defines the two relationships right here? But we have it right there. From grams of carbon to moles of carbon is related by 1 moles of carbon equal to 12 grams of carbon. Where is, so I want to show you that relationship right here. I'm going to write this right there. So we have 1 moles of carbon equal to 12 grams of carbon. What about this relationship? What is the relationship between moles and atom? And that is defined by this conversion factor right here. Where 1 moles of carbon is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. So again, it doesn't really matter how big or small a number, it's still a number. So we can just write that conversion factor up here, and that is 1 mole of carbon equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Then all you have to do is take your given, which is 36 grams of carbon, time by a series of a conversion factor in a specific order of a conversion factor. That is, you multiply by this conversion factor first, which is 1 moles of carbon equal to 12 grams of carbon, followed by 1 moles of carbon equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atom of carbon. So let's start. So I have 36 grams of carbon timed by the first conversion factor, which is 1 moles of carbon equal to 12 grams of carbon. That's our first conversion factor. Now we multiply by the next one, which is this one right here. 
1 moles of carbon equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And the beauty part, all the conversion factor will be given to us. Okay. Now what's next? All you have to do is multiply the conversion factor as a fraction. So that way we can cancel the unit that we don't need. So we have 36 grams of carbon time what is going to be on the bottom of the fraction which is the same as the previous unit if this is gram of carbon the gram of carbon must be on the bottom so 12 grams of carbon going to be on the bottom what's going to be on the top if this part is on the bottom the other part has to be on the top which is one mole of carbon and we are done with that part of conversion factor let's move on to the next conversion factor and we can prove that we are on the right track because the gram is being cancelled out and give us mole okay and then we have what and then we have moles then we have one moles of carbon equal to 6.02 times 10 to 200 then we have the next conversion factor one moles of carbon equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atom of carbon which part will be on the bottom of the fraction of course, we go back and look at the previous unit, which is mole of carbon. So therefore, moles of carbon will be on the bottom. One mole of carbon. Just copy exactly as this part down. If this part is on the bottom, the other part must be on top, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And notice how mole is canceled out giving us our unit of unknown, which is atom of carbon. So now let's simplify this and plug in the calculator. Again, multiply all the number on top divided by all the number on the bottom, which is 36 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Divide every number on the bottom, which is 12 times one giving us 1.806 times 10 to the 24 atoms of carbon so therefore the values of 1.06 times 10 to the 4 atoms of carbon is the same values as 36 grams of carbon basically in chemistry's term is that if you have 36 grams of carbon in that 36 grams of carbon, you have exactly 1.806 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And that is a lot, a lot of atoms. Which makes sense because atoms are very small. Before we end this lesson, I want to remind you that the hardest part is right here, is to find the relationship between the given and the unknown units. And sometimes it is could be simple as one conversion factor but in this case it is relayed by two different conversion factors the hardest part is be careful of the unit so this is like a puzzle where you have to put different unit together where you have to relate different conversion factors together and that's what makes chemistry such a complicated topic to study